The genetic disease that this documentary is going to cover is called achondroplasia, also known as dwarfism or ACH. About 1 in 15,000 to 40,000 babies born get this genetic disease. It is caused by a mutation of the FGFR3 gene. This gene controls bone growth and brain development, which is why most of the symptoms are complications of the brain and bone growth. Dwarfism, in layman's terms, is a condition of short stature. They also have an advocacy group called the Little People of America. To be considered a dwarf is to have an adult height under 4 feet 10 inches. The most common form of the condition is called short-limbed dwarfism. Due to these abnormalities in bone structure, a variety of problems can ensue. Kids usually have a pronounced permanent sway in the lower back, which causes a condition called lordosis. This leads to back pain spurred from spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis affects the lower spinal cord and can lead to other problems as well. Many people have apnea, which is when a person has short periods of slowed breathing or breathing sometimes completely stops. Also, obesity, clubbed feet, and recurrent ear infections are common in people with dwarfism. Clubbed feet are when the feet are not facing the correct way in the baby. They can be sideways facing inwards and can sometimes be bad enough where they are facing the complete other direction up towards the face. This problem can usually be fixed with surgery after birth once the baby is stable. Due to the abnormalities in the brain tissue, some problems can spur from this. One uncommon but extremely serious issue is called hydrocephalus. This is when a buildup of fluid in the brain leads to increased head size and other brain abnormalities. This is a very serious problem that can usually be detected before the baby is even born using an ultrasound. How do people inherit this disease, you ask? Most babies get it from their parents. If both of your parents have achondroplasia, their offspring have a 75% chance of developing the disease. If one parent has a disease, the disease achondroplasia, you have a 25% chance of having it and a 75% chance of being a carrier. An odd thing about this disease is that some babies can develop this disease randomly without any past family history of the disease. There are two main categories of dwarfism, proportionate and disproportionate. Proportionate dwarfism has body parts in proportion to their trunk. They are just very short. Disproportionate dwarfism is when they have a regular sized trunk and short arms or a small trunk and regular sized limbs. Most people with dwarfism have a large head compared to their body and have a prominent forehead. A male's average height is 4 feet 4 inches and the female's average height is 4 feet 1 inches. Due to disproportionate limbs, some people with dwarfism have limited range of motion at the elbow and knee areas. Many people have the misconception that people with dwarfism are not of normal intelligence when in fact they are just as smart as people without dwarfism. So, Mrs. Johnson, you have a chondroplasia? Yes, I do. What complications have you experienced? Well, I have bowed legs, and when I was a baby, I had clubbed feet. Also, I had some extra fluid in my brain as a baby. What complications have you had recently? I have experienced spinal stenosis, which is a grueling process to overcome. So what is the worst part about the treatment? The after part of the physical therapy is very hard some days. What are some symptoms of the spinal stenosis? Some are numbness, neck and back pain, and bowel or urination problems. I have the degenerative type of spinal stenosis, so my symptoms will most likely never go away. So what are some ways to ease the pain of this spinal stenosis? Muscle relaxants, antidepressants, anti-seizure drugs, painkillers like Vicodin for example, and NSAIDs, which are, which are ibuprofens basically. Physical therapy can be very hard if pain is bad, but can also help in the long run. So what are you using currently to ease your symptoms? Currently I am using Vicodin because my symptoms are very severe and it seems to work the best. I also am on a physical therapy routine that seems to be helping but is very tough. If you are just experiencing spinal stenosis, I recommend to start with ibuprofen or a drug that is not that heavy, especially if you are young. 
So is that the only problem from having dwarfism that you have experienced yourself? No, as a matter of fact, I had clubbed feet when I was born and have bowed legs. The clubbed feet were fixed when I was born and the bowed legs are expected to fix once I grow older. Are there any other complications from dwarfism that you have seen? Some babies have delayed motor skills, crowded teeth, sleep apnea, which is trouble breathing while sleeping, arthritis, and weight gain that can further complicate the symptoms I just mentioned. How did you inherit this genetic disease? My mother was a carrier and my dad had dwarfism and those odds were not in my favor, so I had the trait passed down to me as well. How, or, do you have any last comments you would like to make? Actually, yes. When I was younger, kids would tease me because I am short. I really don't like it and it made me feel horrible. I just want people to know that a person's size doesn't define who they are. Thank you for being here with us today. That was very good information. If you have dwarfism and need help, visit LPA.com, which stands for Little People of America. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. These are my works I did. That concludes our documentary on achondroplasia, also known as dwarfism. I hope you enjoyed and comment, rate, and subscribe. Just kidding, this channel is only going to have two videos. But yeah, like the video.